Hi, this is Duncan Ferguson. In this unit, we're going to talk about mineralocorticoids. Both uh, how they're regulated and also their effects. As we talked about in an earlier unit, um, we have basically the compounds aldosterone seen in most of our domestic species and occasionally uh, see corticosterone as mineralocorticoids in rodents. And their main role is electrolyte balance and, um, and blood pressure secondarily. So let's think about electrolyte balance uh, specifically, and we'll get into the, uh, the, the details of that in the next uh, couple of sections. In this slide, I'm showing a, a schema of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Uh, or RAAS for short. And this is a really important system for you to get your head around with regards to understanding blood pressure control, but also now we're going to talk about how aldosterone's in the middle of it. Um, so what happens? I'm going to start up here where we have a situation where there's either low blood pressure or low sodium. And so what happens? This, this uh, juxtaglomerular apparatus is there sensing the, the filtration um, or the low blood pressure, and, and this is in the, obviously in the kidney because the glomerulus is in the kidney. When that happens, the peptide renin is made. So low blood pressure leads to renin production. Renin essentially is an enzyme that can break down uh, or convert angiotensin and tensinogen to angiotensin 1. Uh, and this is the first step that to uh, another step that is um, associated with angiotensin converting enzyme known often as ACE, in the ACE, in the ACE. Uh, we'll talk about ACE inhibitors when regards to managing blood pressure, for example. And angiotensin ACE then converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, one of the most potent uh, vasoconstrictors in the body. You can see what's happening here. We're trying to improve blood pressure. But secondarily, or also, um, it has a positive effect on the production of the adrenal gland uh, aldosterone. And so, in that way, what aldosterone do, does is it retains sodium in the body. That means it reduces secretion of, or excretion of sodium, and secondarily, water. It increases the extracellular fluid volume, that was our goal, uh, that has a negative effect on this system. So it kind of is that negative feedback. If we were to take and start with a situation, for instance, giving an increased extracellular volume, for instance, giving too much fluids to an animal, you'd start here with a negative effect, redu reduced, reduced uh, renin, and reduced everything else here. So you can see this is a very finely tuned system. The bottom line is uh, it's probably protecting the body against low pro blood pressure situations or low sodium situations. So what stimulates aldosterone synthesis? We've kind of already talked about it. Renin via the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and also angiotensin II. Uh, which is the final product in that system that then stimulates via receptors on the adrenal cortex. It leads anything that can lead to a rise in plasma potassium will stimulate aldosterone uh, or ACTH. So there's some ACTH uh, regulation, as we mentioned in the previous unit, uh, with regards to the synthesis of aldosterone itself. Okay, in this slide we've got a, a lot of stuff to talk about, but let's, let's remind you that mineral corticoids work through nuclear receptors. We're going to focus on those effects, although there are um, plasma membrane re receptors for aldosterone. We won't spend a lot of time on that. Where are these receptors? They're in the kidney, colon, and salivary gland. And notice what each of these is involved in is, is either secreting uh, uh, electrolytes and fluids. Um, glucocorticoids interacting with, because they interact with mineralocorticoid receptors, um, it's important to recognize that those tissues that have listed above have a mechanism whereby they make whatever circulating amount of glucocorticoids present uh, 
less active. And they do this through the 11 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase enzyme that can convert cortisol, a fully active glucocorticoid, to a less active glucocorticoid with less active um, mineral corticoid activity as well. Um, this allows, in a sense, the circulating mineralocorticoid, uh, which is usually in smaller concentration, to, to have its effect even in the presence of relatively high concentrations of glucocorticoids. So, so what does aldosterone do in those tissues that are, are target tissues? Basically, um, their aldosterone will rapidly stimulate the activation of existing epithelial sodium channels, called those ENACs. And they'll also involve the synthesis of new proteins. Remember, that's what nuclear receptors mediate, is new protein synthesis through the nuclear, nuclear receptor. Um, and these include more ENAC on the brush border, and also what's called the renal outer medullary ATP-dependent potassium channel. And you'll see how this becomes crucial to the big picture in, in, in the next slide or so. In addition, they also uh, aldosterone also will stimulate the basolateral membrane that is facing the plasma, sodium potassium ATP ACE uh, enzyme, which is crucial to the exchange of sodium and potassium uh, across that membrane. So this slide is also a little bit complex, um, but I encourage you to take a look at it and understand it because it will kind of give you a full picture of, of how the aldosterone uh, interacts with the, with the cell um, that's a target cell. So here we are, we have aldosterone down here, and it's going to find its receptor within the cytosol, gets translocated to the nucleus, RNA is made, well what does it do? It, let's focus in on proteins that it's changing within um, both membranes. Uh, remember, this is a sided type of a cell, meaning that we have the urine over here. We call that the apical surface. And we have the plasma over here. Already showed that over here. Um, and so by taking, let's, let's focus in on that sodium channel. Uh, it, it has the capability of stimulating already existing um, sodium channel, epithelial sodium channels, to increase the amount of sodium that can be brought back into the epithelial cell. Um, and so that's a retention effect. It also has the similar synthesis of this channel that is involved with excreting potassium. So that's all on the urinary surface. And at the same time, it's exchanging the sodium and potassium within the cell uh, by stimulating the sodium potassium ATPase. So you can see the net effect is to generate uh, mechanisms um, that are associated with the movement of sodium in this direction. This is sodium. So we're retaining it, and the movement of potassium in this direction, so we're, we're losing it. Now, I mentioned that you know, the glucocorticoid um, can also interact with the receptor, uh, aldosterone receptor, but what's going on here is that there's um, basically this enzyme that blocks, essentially it doesn't fully block, but part, largely blocks uh, the, or converts cortisol to a less active corti corticosterone, and that makes it less active at the aldosterone receptor. Okay, so let's summarize these integrated effects of mineralocorticoids. They save sodium and lose potassium. They also, um, they also lose hydrogen ions, so there's, there's two positive cations. Um, and this is occurring in the late distal renal tubule and collecting duct. This occurs at what are called principal cells, where you see the increased sodium resorption and re, uh, increased potassium secretion or movement across that membrane and the luminal surface. These are the luminal side. 
And at the A intercalated cells, this is why you also see an effect on uh, acid base balance with aldosterone presence or lack, is the in aldosterone will stimulate increased hydrogen ion secretion through the sodium hydrogen exchanger. Um, other target tissues have similar effects. They're involved with, with electrolytes and, and fluid um, secretion uh, as well and reabsorption. And these include colon, the sal uh, sweat glands, which I didn't mention before, and salivary glands. So in summary, uh, mineral oil corticoids are key, is, are key to the regulation of plasma sodium, potassium, and blood pressure. Aldosterone is the most common mineral corticoid amongst mammals. Uh, renin via angiotensin II increases um, in, or increased plasma potassium in ACTH can regulate aldosterone secretion. I highly encourage you to review the renin angiotensin aldosterone system as being key to your understanding. Um, aldosterone itself works through a nuclear receptor that increases the channels on the luminal surface for sodium and potassium, and the uh, exchange system, that's ATP, driven uh, uh, in the basolateral membrane of the distal tubule and the collecting duct. And glucocorticoids, are, uh, even if they're in higher quantity, have less effect on these target tissues because they are more or less enzymatically deactivated by the enzyme 11-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase.